When the world has left you to be naked, God says, come under my opinion. I'm going to give you a, a Boaz. It so happened that she was in Boaz field. And this time, she's not there by mistake. She's cleaning on the peripheries where she's taking the leftover. And all of a sudden, here arrives Boaz. And he looks at her and says, who is that girl? The beauty and the blessed. And she is now in the lineage of the great. And she's saying, I'm not here to die, but I'm here to give life. He has come that you may have life and have life in abundance. Come on, shout yes. I want to remind you of the scripture, Your yeah, Beauty and the Blessed, Songs of Solomon 4, verses 7. And this is the reason we are here, because the vision is birthed from scripture. And there's a reason why it's called Beauty and the Blessed, because sometimes we forget our beauty. Sometimes we lose it along the way, because life can be hard. But God reminds us, and He's a restorer. And he says, I'm going to remind you that you are beautiful and that you are blessed. And for the fact that you woke up this morning, there's a reason why you are still here. So let's say the scripture together. You are all together beautiful, my darling. There is no flaw in you. If you ever forget that, remember that God can whisper those words in your mouth. It doesn't matter what man has said to you in your life. It doesn't matter what your employer has said to you. It doesn't matter how life has beat you down. Remember, you are all together beautiful, my darling. There is no flaw in you. Hallelujah. Can we give God a round of applause? call upon the bishop who is our keynote speaker for today and I want us to open up our hearts, open up our minds open up our spirits and receive the word of God. You know as you grow you realize there's so much power in the word. When you leave here and you know when the lights are off and the music is gone and you know you've taken your videos and your pictures, it's just you and God left and it's only the power of those words that you heard that's going to keep you alive. I don't know why you came here today. I don't know what you went through. I don't know what you are going through. But I know for a fact that the word of God can give you life. Amen. So as we welcome the bishop to come, remember that it is God speaking through him. Let us not take this time that he's honored with for granted. Amen. Bishop Solala, man, we are so honored to have you here today. Can we all just rise? Can we just have, you know, can we just give him a sound of praise? You know, as the Holy Spirit, as you welcome the Holy Spirit, there's an open heaven in this place already. Heavenly Father, we welcome you into this place with open hearts. Father, we say, speak, Lord, speak. Our hearts are expectant, Heavenly Father. And we know that whenever a word of God is uttered out, it will never return back. Hallelujah. May these words that are about to be spoken on the pulpit speak life to somebody. So, Bishop, we honor you and we are ready for the word of God. Can we give Bishop a round of applause? Hallelujah. Wow, come on, let us give the Lord a hand of praise. He is a mighty God. He is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Just take your seats for a while. Um, when D was talking about here, oh, by the way, Pastor D, when he was talking about here, he said, watch my neighbor and Pindu, I happen to be next to your wife and he said she's going to change I say if this is what I'm seeing is going to change I don't know what else is coming because she's so beautiful she's so awesome so I, I was waiting for anything you know God can surprise you all of it. I mean if if, if, if you, are, you, are, you have not seen anything are beautiful this 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 is beauty at its best and uh, once again i'm not a stranger here i love this program for some reason for some reason i happen to i i just i just the other day i came just to sleep it was going on and i was sleeping but i just wanted to be there you know so i had given myself to the lord thank you so much pindu wherever you are 
Uh, God bless you so much for uh, taking up this great program. Kudos. And, uh, you know, you, you got to learn some few, you know, vocabulary in order to, to kind of impress. Um, and to, 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 to Pastor Florence, uh, just to happy, to happy to see you. Um, and a great support to the family of the Chippers. Thank you for giving birth to these beautiful twins. Uh, to, uh, to where everybody wants to relate. Have you ever seen people that you just wish she was your sister? You know, you just, you just wish. This is the greatest wish I ever had uh, to have the people that I, I love so much. I'm not alone. I'm with the team uh, as well. I'm with my, my daughter and my son. Where is Putari? Please just uh, give me hands up and put it so Why do you sit down? And I've got the Lechetos with me here who are with me. And to all... Um, once again, it's like musicians only like to be here. You have never been in Pretoria label if you have not been to Tower of Grace. For some reason, I don't know, I don't know why you want to end up here. But I uh, want to appreciate your music that is on the space. My assignment will be very short, yet so precise. Um, when I was requested to come and make a presentation, I was just thinking, what else could epitomize this great topic, beauty and the blessed, except the story of Ruth. The story of Ruth is an epitome of this whole program because the story does not start good. But I'm excited about the end of the story. And it talks to father-in-laws. It talks to mothers-in-law. It talks to the singles in the house. Male, men, women that are singles. It talks to single men that are in the house. And above all, it talks to married people. So, so, so what else do you want in this book of Ruth that does not exist to talk to the people like this? In the book of Ruth, chapter 1, I mean chapter 2, verse 1, he says, there was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elmelech. His name was Boaz. So Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him in whose sight I may find favor. And, and, and she said to, to her, go my daughter. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And this is a statement that I like. And she happened. She happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz who was the family of Elimelech you can just go and read this whole story but the narrative of the story starts when the judges were in place where it was free for all it was almost like South Africa it's free for all people can do as they pleased it is so. You marry whoever you want. Male to male, female to female. You do as you... Let me, let, me, let me hear you. Because if you don't talk to me, I will not know if you are listening to me. So, so it was that kind uh, that everybody did what was right in their sight. And, and the danger of walking in the time where you live doing what is right on your sight, you may miss God's movement at that time, at the time of free of all. So 
it is a choice to make to say, I missed everything that I am given a choice over. I am choosing to please God. Uh, it's not obvious that you are here to please God. But God, in other words, you, you made a choice. You made a choice to say, I want to please God. And the Bible talks about the second F. The first one was free for all. The second one, it was that there was famine in the land. There was starvation. And this starvation was coming from the situation in, uh, in, 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 in Bethlehem, in, in the Judah side, where things did not go wrong, right at that point in time. And of course, we end up with the last F where we find funerals, one after another. I want to challenge, uh, basically, let me start by all men that are attended this session to say, it is important to take the right decision for your family. Mm. Uh, Eli Malek did not take the right decision because he spent almost 10 years not going to church. <coughs> that was not the Holy Spirit. Uh, he spent 10 years not going to church. And, and when they spent 10 years, he moved them from church to go to Moab. So it is important for say, uh, if we're talking about the beauty and the blessed, the story does not end there, but it starts there. It starts where the man has taken the wrong decision, but it can still yet be corrected. And uh, 10 years of not church, it's not even two years. We, we, we have been given an option. Some have felt it's so good not to go to church after the corona, but God has given us a privilege to come into this beauty and blessed today, to be revived, to be regenerated. And, 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 and El Melek was a man who was able to provide the food. I mean, in this generation, if you don't have money, you seem to be somebody. But he was not giving what I call the spiritual support. So El Melek missed God's movement by supplying the food. But he was missing to supply the spiritual background. And therefore, his two sons uh, get married into the land of the Moabites. And, and, and then we see that at this point in time, as the, uh, um, I just want final, to finalize the big of introduction so that we can flow together. Uh, and and I, I want to thank God because uh, there was a difference in Naomi's life. Uh, the difference is that she is a mother-in-law who is not possessive. We, we, we do have, in our culture, we do have, if the husband dies, Definitely, you're going to be blamed for everything. You're going to be standing. I don't know where, where you are right now. Whether you are in your marriage, which is uh, trying to thrive, or you are in a situation where uh, you were once married and your husband died, they said, uh, we took every, we, they take everything which you have, including the bed that you bought. They say, oh, she comes crying and says, oh, this is my, 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 my son's bed. And that was not so with this woman called Naomi. She became a fan of her, her daughter-in-law. She, she celebrated her uh, because she knew what it means to lose a husband. Uh, and therefore, she take prayer. And she, she prayed. Many a times when you read the book of Ruth, you find that uh, uh, Ruth was surviving because of the mother of law, mother-in-law's prayer. I, oh, how I wish you have a mother-in-law who knows how to talk to God on your behalf. When situations are not going very well, who knows to stand before God and say, I can see already my daughter is under duress mm, and under stress. And, uh, and, and, and not add to stress. I was listening, I was looking uh, as I do my research to say, why, why do these girls in Britain don't, don't, don't give way, you know? The two girls are still on throne. <laughs> right now, they've frustrated Prince Charles. Ah, the, the young man is frustrated. The girls are going nowhere. And they, we are told it's because they don't have stress. Oh, how, how I wish life will be life without stress. You, you know, when you wake up in the morning, everything is already lined and shining up. We also see that... Uh, this is, this is the crux of my matter this morning. We talk about the providence of God. Now, when we talk about the providence of God in the beauty and the beautiful, the story, the story does not 
end there, but it starts there. Because when we talk, there's a two ways that God provides for us. The first way that God provides for us is with the hand that it has the miracle. In other words, where the miraculous starts to take place. And, and, and you see, you see you, you, the healing coming through of your marriage. The healing coming through of your life. The, you know, the things you've been struggling with for a long time. Just miraculous has come to place. But, but, but there's a difference between the miraculous hand of God, which is visible to the invisible hand. And that is the story in the book of Ruth. Because when you look at the book of Ruth, they, there's, there's no mention of God. But God is using the day-to-day -day activities in order to change a life. He's, she's living her own life. So, so, so God is using the providence of God. You read the whole book, you don't find the mention of God. At least one when we say the God of Israel, but it was adventure. But there's no God there. But God on the background is working. He's doing something that she is not expecting, but he's, he's at work. <laughs> your situation right now, it makes him that God is not working. You look at yourself and say, but me, who am I? But God is at work. We also see what we call the prudence of Ruth. Ruth became an example of the young women. I want, I want to just zero in there because she was from the wrong background. Mm, you, you don't know the Moabites, by the way. Let me give you to speed to come fast forward to where uh, the Moabites comes from. The Moabites are the generation of Lord who slept with one of his daughter. And therefore, this generation of people that were out of there, God is saying, I'm an outcast. You look at yourself and say, but my life did not start very well. It's not how it starts. Let's wait until it comes to an end. Because it is the end of the story that starts to get exciting. The, even, even the worship, they were worshiping a God called Kimosh. You, 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 you wonder why Ruth will say uh, to, to, to the, to the mother-in-law, wherever you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Because she did not know the other God other than what the mother-in-law started to display over her. Am I talking to somebody right now? She's also from the wrong family as well. I mean, number two, at this point in time, she's no longer a virgin. So she doesn't qualify within Israel's you know, context of things. You're not a virgin. You are number two. You are from the wrong family. You worship God, gods. And it was strictly say, nobody from Israel should marry from the Moabites. Ah, but this story is not how it starts, man. It's not how, it's gonna be how it ends that gets exciting. I mean, God himself is working on the background with this thing. <laughs> and, and, and the Bible says she was also not just that. She was also bankrupt. She didn't have policies like you. Who your husband left you with a lot of money and you blew it. Maybe we should uh, add you on. I blew it uh, because uh, may, 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 maybe you are not that kind of a person. Am I communicating something that you're hearing me right now? She was bankrupt. She was number three, homeless. She didn't have a place to stay. So here they come and, 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 and she was now at the food bank. Now what does it mean to be at the food bank? It means you are part of those when they say there is a project for food distribution. You stand in the queue and you want the food. This, this is the story of this woman. Now at this point she's very vulnerable. In other words, if she had hanged herself, who would have blamed Ruth for hanging herself? But I like the prudence. Number one, because she had a friend, and if that friend was Naomi, she stuck close. And Naomi, by the way, she's also broken. Because she says, you call me Naomi, but change my name, please. Call me Mara, because God dealt with me a blow. I, life is showing me flames wherever I am. I came out rich I, I, when I came out of this land. But when I came back, I am poor. Even the poor calls me poor. And you wonder if the poor person is calling you poor, how poor you are. You must be poor squared. But also what we realize is the fact that Ruth was a hard worker. She was a hard worker, by the way. She, 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 she didn't sit on his own. In other words, she did not allow the situation to dictate what the outcome should be. 
So it's not the beginning of the story I'm interested about. It is the end of the story that I'm interested on. Because things, I'm, I'm, I'm collating all this information to challenge somebody that, do you think you've got a problem? After I've indicated all these things, do you think you've got a problem? <laughs> I don't think you've got a problem. Your husband is dead. You are now going to the land which you don't know. You have never been there. People there are told never to marry any mobile woman. Mo, 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 uh, uh, mo, uh, from mobile woman, you are supposed, supposed to marry. In other words, all odds against you. But we, 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 we begin to understand this verse. He says, let me go to the field. Perhaps I will find favor. What, what I'm pursuing is nothing but favor. Can somebody say favor? Can I hear you strong and say favor? Because favor is not fair. It does not, it does not look at how you dress. It looks at who God has said you to be. The story does not start there. But the end of the story is important. for The beauty of this is that the blessedness, beauty and the blessed. She's coming from every, everything that things are not working for her. And she's saying, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to rise up. I'm going to go and do something. And what I like, what I like about it, he says, it so happened. <laughs> In our time, she was lucky. But she was not lucky. But in the background, there was a hand. But in Tate, Tate, Hiaura, uh, can we finish the story quickly? Can we finish the story quickly? The end of the story becomes very interesting. But let me wait, wait, wait for me to come to the end of the story. Things are not working, but God on the side, he's saying, Ruth, you're going to be in the land of Canaan. I mean, the land that flows with milk and honey. I have distanced you. I, and she looked at herself and says, me, I don't have qualified. All the qualification puts me aside. But hey, she's beautiful and blessed. Ah, she says, what I want, uh, in, in her own way, she says, I want to go for favor. But in my words, it says, I'm going with the beauty and the bless. Because wherever I'm going, I'm going to be a blessing. She, she, somehow, the sixth sense kicked in. And she says, she refused bluntly. When Naomi says, go back to your land. She says, I'm not going back. Ah, Oprah may go back, but I am not going back. Where you live, I will live. Where you praise, I will praise. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. She did not know what she was inviting. She did not know what she was calling. It is not the beginning of the story, which is exciting, but the end of the story. Listen till the end of the story so that you understand that you are too blessed to be stressed. Look at your neighbor and say you are too blessed to be stressed. When God is working with his providence, it's, it so happened. It, it so happened that on the 30th, you were in beauty and the blessed. It so happened. <laughs> in other, it's, not an, it's not an accident because when you look at this, you don't see what's coming. But when you look at the rear, rear view mirror, you start to say, God was at work right there when I did not see anything. <laughs> and, and remember, there is a warning that says things on the mirror are closer than they seem. In other words, what, what it looks into, when you look at your rear view mirror, you say, but what, 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 why did I go to beauty and the bless 2021? Because God has got you in mind. It is not the beginning of the story that I'm talking about, but it's the end of the story which I'm excited about. God says, you are going to come there, girl. You are going to come. And it so happened that she was in Boaz field. In other words, it was accidental. She did not plan, but the accident led her to a place where God has purposed her. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I am. Take me to the place where you shall, 
you shall hide me under your wings and under your pinions. You're gonna, you're gonna hide. You're gonna be singing like others. Is cover me, my Lord. Oh, cover me. Oh, cover me. Under your shelter. When the world has left you to be naked, God says, Come under my opinion. I'm going to give you a, a Boaz. It so happened that she was in Boaz field. And this time, she's not there by mistake. She's cleaning on the peripheries where she's taking the lit leftover. And all of a sudden, here arrives Boaz. And he looks at her and says, Who is that girl? Ah, come on. Somebody. Because when you're going through your tough moments, don't look shabby. When, when you're going through some tough time, go to the mirror and make up. When, when life is dealing with you some hard blows, go to the mirror and say, hey, you know what? Here I come. Here comes. I don't know about you, but I feel somebody's getting courage here to say, I'm glad I came to Beauty and the Blessed 2021. Say, I'm glad I'm here. Don't carry the baggage. Who's that girl? When Boaz looked at her, in other words, there was no way he could miss her. Listen to Boaz's testimony. I'm instructing all men, don't lay hands on her. <laughs> God is saying you're preserved for a moment. You're preserved for a person. You're preserved for a time. You're preserved for things that are coming ahead of you. That is not the, even the end of the story. There's end is still to come. When I look at her, she was saying, don't touch her. And in other words, don't, don't, just, don't just leave her alone. But when she's gleaning, I want you to go and throw some cons where she's gleaning so that she can take. In other words, do the job for her. I can feel the hand on the background. Somebody is writing your story. It's not over until it's over. The end of the story becomes exciting because God is at work. Am I communicating to somebody this morning, this evening? He says, I want to go because I want to find favor. Who doesn't want favor? Anybody who doesn't want, I want favor. I don't know about you. I want favor because favor says, I'm going to get my sweatless victory. And not only do you throw it where she is, I want you to go to the already harvested. What has been had? Take it from where you have harvested and give it to her. That's favor. And she goes back to the mother-in-law and she starts to share with her. And says, for the last time, poverty shall be no more. God has come through for us. Mommy, 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 mommy. God has come through for us. Because every material provision is a spiritual matter. L let me talk to you a bit here. Because let me educate you a bit. Every material provision is a spiritual matter. And as a matter of fact, when you look at wealth, don't look it from the world side. Look it from God's side. God's side, he says, it has four categories of people you must look at. We've got the rich, I mean the righteous and rich. That was Boaz. He was righteous and what? Come on, talk to me. He was what? Righteous. Come on, say it again. No, not, not this nowadays world where you get boys working for you. No. Boaz did clean money. And he also knew how to share his wealth. So he was righteous and rich. So there is also righteous and poor. I don't believe you want to be in that category. Uh, because that, that's where 
Ruth was. She was righteous but poor. But you've got unrighteous and rich. You know, in other words, we've got people that want to use, that loves people, that, that, that loves money and use people. The righteous and rich people loves people and use money. <laughs> let, me, let me explain it. There are people that are messing up with our girls because they've got money. They, they, they have money, they use our girls. There are people that use people because they've got money. But when you when the true riches is when you are rich and you know how to use money and love people. Oh, as figures how things got done. He was also a defender. Let me not hang in on that. Let me, let me give you about nine points you must quickly look for if you're going to look for a person, woman or no woman, uh, who Will, who, who ask people, people walk in the scale of safe. There are people that are safe. And there are people that are very, very unsafe. So in the scale of safe and very unsafe. In other words, you can, you can, you can draw the line there. There are people that when, when they are unsafe, they run churches, but the choir belongs to them. Am I talking to somebody that is listening to me? In other words, that's not a safe environment. Where, where you've got a pastor that sleeps with the whole choir. That, that's in a safe environment. Mm. I remember, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to get there. Boaz got a privilege to do that to Ruth. Because in chapter 3, she's given to say, go and sleep on his feet. And he says, for the whole night, I'm not going to touch you. You know, in other words, she looked at her, number one, with the father's heart. She says, my daughter. Number two, the righteous people, the safe people, are people that care about your safety. Some of us have been abused even by our fathers. They introduce you to other people as well. They enforce boundaries. They are generous. They encourage character. They pray for you to flourish. They provide comfort and kindness. They point you to a place of safety, which is God. I've just finished the list. So that we come to the conclusion of the story. So as we come to the conclusion of this story, because remember, all romantic relationship must move towards marriage. Let me repeat that. All romantic Relationships must end in marriage. It does not help for you to go to McDonald's every day. And you're asking, what's happening? Where are we going? I don't want to eat me your, 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 your McDonald's every day. Ah, I need, I, where, where, what should happen with our relationship? Mm. If that guy is not going to marry you, give him a red card. You're, be you're too beautiful to, to sell yourself short. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, let me give you things that, that hinders uh, our young people at this point in time from getting to the position of marriage where they are. Number one, we, we become so much, uh, we inherit our family too much. We are, in other words, especially firstborns. Where are the firstborns? Oh. Because firstborns becomes mother too early. <laughs> As a firstborn, you become a mother before you become a mother, really. So if I were to advise men, I'm saying, look for single people that are firstborns they will help you but, but, but we should not be too much inherent to our family and we forgot you've got a life to live number two number two number two I'm glad I'm glad I'm standing here don't dress dull go to your wardrobe 
take all the choir ropes and give them, donate them to the church. Because if, if there is an element of beauty, highlight it. Am I communicating to somebody that is here? And don't, don't be ashamed to highlight it. Is, is it still working? I hear we are still doing a sound check. Just highlight yourself. I'm not talking about you revealing. I'm talking about dressed elegant. Make a statement that you have arrived. Uh, you know, and, and don't get worried. Don't get worried when married men propose you. Men are always like that. Just tell them you are not my standard. You are not the type I'm looking for. No, don't be a, a small version of your mother. Well, let, let me stop there. Let me stop there. Because romantic love is visual. <laughs> number three, number three, don't be all about work. Poor you're succeeding in your career and you don't have a social life. In, in the generation where we are, it's all about work. No, have coffee with somebody. How will they see you if you are only from, you've got your triangle, from church to work, home, church to work, home. Uh, hello, hello somebody, hello somebody. Break the monotony. Go from home, coffee. All beauty and the blessed. <laughs> Don't be boring. Highlight yourself to say, here, here am I. The last point is that don't be socially isolated. Imagine if Ruth has put a profile or, or her profile on, on Facebook. My mother-in-law, her, her husband died. I'm not a virgin. Uh, that profile does not sell. Particularly in the generation where there are masks. Take a beautiful picture. Throw some of the pictures you have taken here on your Facebook. Not those other ones. Oh, I'm, I'm just communicating so that I can close this now. I'm closing now because I'm already telling you, you don't understand what the pastor is speaking about. I'm talking about, hey, when you're married, don't be a dull. I am 34 year, 35 years going this year into our marriage. And whenever my wife comes, she says, Honey, I was driving the car and this man is proposing me. That's right which means I'm doing a good job. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, am I communicating to you? You know, it's people get into marriage and they pack the car for marriage. No, there's no more perfume. When we wake up in the morning, is the slippers and pajamas. Oh, come on. Am I too much? Ah, you're too much, Bishop. You're too much. Let's conclude the story now. I think my time is over. Let me conclude my story. My story is concluded in Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. And amongst the genealogy of everything, it says Solomon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Now, is the genealogy of Jesus. 
when everything was odd, Jesus was born out of Ruth. Oh, that's the end of the story. God had, the, had Jesus in mind when he was saying, I'm taking this Moabite woman, the beauty and the blessed, and she is now in the lineage of the great. And she's saying, I'm not here to die, but I'm here to give life. He has come that you may have life and have life in abundance. Come on, shout yes. story today are you defined by the beginning of your story or how your story ends Woo! I'm all about how the story ends hallelujah Bishop Soli Lalaman thank you so much Bishop that was powerful can we give Bishop a round of applause hallelujah may the good God continue to use you Thank you so much for the word. Thank you for being such an amazing father figure. Thank you for hearing from God. That was such a beautiful and powerful word. And I hope that you did not miss it. Amen. Don't let this word pass you by. Hallelujah. Yo, there's so many things that I got from that. The hand that has the miracle. Hallelujah. And I hope that you experience the hand that has the miracle here today. Hallelujah.